Alright, hello everyone, this is Mikey Bizan, and I'm doing a little introduction of the animation software I use. It's called TV Paint, and it's a very powerful 2D animation program. Uh, you can do a lot of different styles on it, it's very much adaptable to your particular style. So, today I'm just going to be showing just how do you even get this program to run because unfortunately a lot of animation programs are not very user friendly at first so the first thing you'll do is just go up to file click new project and you'll be given the option to modify the project properties at the very start and you can change this later on like you can change the frame rate later on if you want to but starting out, we'll just go with HDTV 1080. And down here, there's a little box next to frame rate where you can select some standard rates used in animation, like 12 frames a second, 15 frames a second, or 24, which it automatically starts on. And I would recommend just sticking with that for now because it is the standard. So we'll click New Project. All right, so what we have here is obviously a blank page to draw on. But before we get drawn, let's just look at the layout. So on the left here, you have a color wheel where you can pick the color that you're gonna use. And underneath it, the main panel, you have a bunch of little tools and for now, we'll just keep it simple with um, a pencil tool. You can come up here, click backspace, which I do that a lot, or control Z. So you can just mess around with these tools, like um, the size, you can alter the size, go with six pixels and it's like that. But we'll just keep it on two for now for this little introduction. Alright, so come down here, this is your timeline. And when you start a new project, it automatically gives you a frame. Um, but if you click over to the right, start drawing, it automatically creates a new frame. So, you can just keep drawing, but it's not very helpful if you can't see what your last drawing looked like. It's kind of hard to plan the movement. So that is why you have a light box. And if you don't see the light box automatically, go up to Windows and go to Animation and make sure you, that light, light table is turned on. Okay, so the light table has a bunch of numbers and these symbolize the frames so like zero is the current frame you're on you want to make sure the opacity of zero is turned all the way up otherwise you won't see your frame so one is the previous drawing and then one to the right is the next drawing so just to give you an example come down here to your layer and see this light bulb this is the light table you need to make sure this is turned on, otherwise it won't be turned on. Okay, so let's just get, let's just get with it here. Okay, so here's the current little scribble I made. If I go over one, there's an after image of it. Now, if I go over again, there's nothing. But if I come up here on light table and click two, I can see it because now I'm like the further back you click these numbers the more frames you can see from the past but you don't want to go too overboard with the otherwise you'll just have a bunch of scribbles all over the place so I don't like any of this so I'm just gonna select it all and up here there's a skull where you can delete your foolishness and I use that a lot. Alright, so we're on a 
on a clean slate here. Sort of. Well, I figure the best way to show the rest of the stuff is to just start animating something. So, yeah, frame rate. Um, so we have it on 24 frames a second, but I'm just gonna go down to 12, which would be animating on twos. Um, there's 24 frames in a second, 48 frames in two seconds, 72 frames in three seconds, four seconds is 98, or uh, 96, five seconds would be 120, and so on. But for 12 frames a second, it's just half of that. So I've gotten really good at basic math, trying to plan movements with thinking in terms of how many frames are in a second. If you click zero, you go into full screen. If you click this little full screen symbol down here, there you go. And you can also change the size uh, by clicking the percentage. So like if you're drawing something and you want to really get some detail going, you can go into 100% or more. I normally don't work this big because you tend to lose sight of the bigger picture if, if you're just concentrating on all the little details, at least up first. When you're first drawing an animation sequence, the main thing is the movement of all the drawings in relation to one another. And then you go in and add the details later. That is how, that's the best way to do it, is just break it into simple parts. So, yeah. Then you push zero again to bring up your timeline. Okay, so I'm just gonna click the skull. And, uh, let's see here. So I guess I should go ahead and talk about the layers, which is down here at the timeline. Uh, if you click new layer, animation layer, you get a new layer. And this is helpful if you want a background that's going to stay static throughout the whole sequence. You can click here and put it on hold to where whatever you're animating, that background is going to stay in place. It's like if I have a butterfly that is flying over a background, background will stay in place as the butterfly flies around. I'll be doing more in-depth tutorials like this where I hopefully make more sense and talk about the principles of animation, the 12 principles of animation like squash and stretch um, and all the others because it's not much good to know how to use a program if you don't know how to make animation. On the other hand, it's not much good to know how to make animation if you don't understand how to use the program. Which is why I'm making this video to hopefully show you how to use this program. So, I suppose um, I'm just gonna delete all this April foolishness and make something that is cool. Something that would be cool might be a bomb. So, oh yeah. Man, there's a lot of stuff. There's just a lot of stuff to go over here. So, I have it on a race right now, but I'll go to color. Um, so I've selected the circle tool. And it can just fill in a shape. Um, so I'm actually going to have this frame hold, but see I drew all these other frames before. So I'm just going to select them all, go up to image, and cut those images. And then come back down here and select hold. That way this frame will hold for as long as I need it to. And draw this bomb. Okay. 
All right, so kind of want to color this rope and this other part of the bomb. So I'll go back down to my timeline and there's many different ways you can color stuff. But one way I do it is create a new layer, put the layer under the image that I'm going to be coloring, select paint bucket and go to source, select above. Currently the source was on layer, which means that I would have been painting on this blank page down here. But if I select above, it will paint on the image directly above. And I can fill that in. And some of the things you might want to check out um, under here is like expand. I put that on one range. I normally have it on like 100 or 120. But if the lines are very mm, like have some small gaps in them or are just not very powerful lines like if you imported drawings that were done by hand with delicate line work you would want to make the range a lot smaller like maybe 30 or 20. You just have to play around and see what's the best fit for what you currently need. It's really hard for me to talk and draw at the same time. Actually just talking and doing anything at the same time. For instance, one time I was at I was coming home from Walmart with my friend. We were talking about stuff and I was really getting into the conversation he was talking about. I wasn't paying attention to where I was going because I was just listening to the words he was saying, trying to concentrate on how am I going to respond to this. Next thing I know, I'm pulling into the Taco Bell drive through and I don't even like Taco Bell. And I'm staring at this menu of all this stuff to order. And I was like, whoa, how did I get here? And then I got something because I, I can't talk and drive at the same time or else I end up at Taco Bell. Uh, okay, I'm actually kind of doing a different method here. Okay. So, yeah. So these uh, lines I drew in blue, which I kind of don't like, um, if you want to change the color of your lines or anything, you can select the images you want to change, go up to effects, go down to color, and the second option is color adjust, and you'll be given the ability to change the color to however you want it. Which, that's an effect I use often. There's a lot of effects up here that I never really use. But the main ones are color adjust, then key, or I mean motion, go to keyframer and that will be all your camera movements which will I'll show that in a different video because that's a lot more complicated and now I'm going to start um, erasing the the part of this rope that has already been consumed by the fire to make it a little more realistic so I'm going to select a kind of bigger eraser like 12 Okay, so now we'll just make sure that this is, this is getting erased. What the heck? Oh, I'm not on the right thing. Hold on. Professional! What the heck? Oh, I'm still not on it. Okay. Oh, I see. I'm, okay, check this out. I'm erasing the drawing layer. See, the color is still there because I did the color on a separate layer. So, if you want to merge layers, which I do in this case, so I can erase them both at the same time, you will select the layer that you want to merge, and then hold down Shift and select the other layer you want to merge. You can merge more than one layer, just keep holding Select, merging all the layers you want to merge. So these two layers down here are selected the bomb and the rope. And then you come up to layer and under merge you'll hit merge selected layers. So now this is all one layer. Like see this eyeball? You can select what you want to see. 
and that'll make it invisible or not. Or if I made something that I don't want to mess with at all, like a background layer, I can click this lock and I won't be able to modify the image at all. It'll be safe from me accidentally drawing on it. Okay, so let's get back to business here. We're just gonna, this is just gonna be a simple animation and hopefully I'll remember more stuff to show you guys as I do this because again, this is a totally new learning experience for me as I'm sure it is for you if you don't know anything about this program. Hopefully, after I'm done with this, you will know something about this program. Okay. All right, whoops. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and get this bomb exploding a little bit. All right. So to do this explosion, I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing some keyframes. Now the keyframes are the key moments in a, in a movement. And then you'll go in and draw the in-betweens which go in between the keyframes. So, I'll go ahead, put my light box on so I can see where that was. And we'll start just drawing a simple explosion here. I actually want a thicker line just to make this a little more cartoony. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bigger so I can have less terrible line work. Okay. Okay, so this will be a keyframe. Then we'll come out here and I'll start going beyond the borders of the frame. Now if I had a soundtrack in here that had an explosion sound, I could come up here on the soundtrack and actually look at the waveform and sync it up to the big moments of the explosion to really make it make it sync up. That's how you do uh, lip 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 syncing as well if you have dialogue. But that'll be a topic for another time. We'll get some like smoke going, I guess. Do, 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 I suck at this. All right. Okay, so that looks super confusing. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we'll get the smoke just slowly coming off screen. I'm actually going to hit previous two frames so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, and I'll just go up off screen. Okay. Bam! Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. Okay, so if I wanted to add in-betweens between each of these drawings, I could select all these drawings, <clears throat> then go to um, exposure under image, add exposure, and then just on the second half of this frame on, under here, I'll just delete it. This is sort of one way to do it. Um, then go back to light table and just have the previous frame showing and the next frame showing. Then I'll just draw exactly more or less in between the line work of these two frames. Which is why these are called in between drawings. They mesh together the key moments. The more in betweens you add, the slower the movement will be. The less frames you have, the more violent and fast the movement will be. So for the smoke, we're going to add a few more frames than the explosion just to show that the explosion was pretty powerful and fast <clears throat> and the smoke is the after effect. It's a little bit more calm. Bam. So 
So we color this, you'll be able to see what the heck I'm even doing here. Because I know this is kind of like, whoa, hard to tell. Bam, bam. All right. Now, it's always good to just play back your moments every so often just to kind of get an idea of what, what, what it looks like. And if you should add more frames or, you know, nothing set in stone. Don't think just because you drew a key frame here and an in-between there that you can't modify things or delete unnecessary frames or add more frames. It's all, it's like improvisation. So over here on the sketch panel, um, there's red, green, and blue, which is good for using those colors to lay down your initial sketch. And then later on, I can trace over it with a different color with a more accurate line work and erase the first color I drew. For, for instance, see this rough shape? If I'm doing my final line work, I'd go over it a little more softly with red. And then once I trace the whole thing, I can go over here to this X, this blue X, and erase the blue drawing underneath it. So for now, we're just roughing this out with blue. Uh, he's just gonna be happy holding this bomb here. And then when it explodes, we'll draw him kind of like um, pretty messed up. So I'm just going to stretch this drawing out to the point where it's going to explode. Okay. Alright, first, uh, I'm gonna draw this. Okay, hold on. Alright, so after it explodes, this hair is gonna be like crazy. And I'm actually gonna draw his eyes on a second layer. His body's gonna be static, but his eyes are gonna be blinking. So we're gonna draw his eyes on a separate layer. That way we can animate his eyes and keep his body stationary. So after it explodes, it's going to be like, boom. Okay. Eh. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start animating his eyes. We will merge these layers. Oops, first, um, okay, get rid of the blue, and then we'll merge these two layers and color it, and then stretch it out to the point that needs to be, and then, yeah, we'll uh, drag it underneath the bomb, because currently He's, see if the line works above the bomb. We don't want that. But for right now, it's okay, because we're just, we have to see what we're doing here. All right, so now let's merge these layers. And we're gonna stretch it out to the point where he has face the impact of the explosion. The see is above the explosion, we don't want that. So this layer that's on the very top, which is him colored, I'm gonna just drag it all the way down underneath. So now, after I do this, boom! Okay, so now we're gonna take these two images, copy it, I'm gonna drag it out here 
and then pace. This is the eye blink. So this is going to be him blinking his eyes. So if we see that, that's how rapidly he's blinking his eyes. But that's a little too fast, so I'm going to go to add an exposure, which is just, um, means add another frame. Exposure just means, like, frames. So now let's see how fast it is. Eh, that's alright. So we'll just take these two, copy it, and we're just going to make this loop as a cycle. Just keep copying these layers, I mean uh, these frames, and then let's have him blink for a bit, and then he's going to go back to just holding his eyes wide open. So here we go. Paste. Alright, so the last frame is going to be him just holding his eyes open, so I'm going to delete this frame if I'm closing his eyes. And we're going to drag it out, have him hold it for a bit. Alright, so here he goes. Alright, so that's, that's something. Just a simple, silly little animation. So, once you have made a little animation, and you want to export it, all you have to do to export the file is go up to File, and then export to and you'll be able to determine where you want to save the file so I have a folder for my animation that I'm working on and um, right after the name of the folder which is thoughts animation for me this says untitled.avi I would recommend exporting your files as AVI you can you have a bunch of other options like right here, the format, you have all these, but AVI seems to work best for me. And make sure the quality is at 100. So I'm just gonna call this the name of the file I saved it as, which was just bomb. And then you go down here, make sure that the frame rate's what you want it to be, um, all your specs are right. Then here, this is important, currently I'm on frame 58 which uh, this metal thing just tells you whatever frame you were on. But what's important is to the left and to the right. Mark in means the frame that you're gonna start your export, export video on. The bar to the right is the last frame of your exported video. So what that means is, say this was only 24, then the exported video would only include the first 24 frames of this animation, which would stop right here. Um, or if it was like, oh, if I only exported the first four frames, it would stop right here. So just make sure that you export it to the last frame that you want it to be. So in this case, it'll just be 64. Then you just go up to export, and that's how you do it. And then you can drag it into Final Cut or whatever editing software you're using and add effects to it if you need to adjust the color and that's how you make a basic scene so if you have any questions on how to use this program please ask them in the comments below and I will either comment my answers or make a video showing in detail how to do whatever you need to be done and I'll be making more detailed videos in the future uh, going in depth of some of the things I talked about in this video, like layers, coloring, there's a lot more about coloring, like doing cell shaded graphics and other painting techniques, um, and like making backgrounds and panning the backgrounds using camera movements, creating a bunch of different effects. So if you have any questions, Again, feel free to ask, and thanks a lot for watching, and that's, this concludes my little demonstration of how to make a basic scene in TV Paint. It's a really cool program. Broken hearts, make it rain.